I feel like for me, it feels seamless because you prepared for so long, but it's just like you guys prepping for a game. That's the fun part. That's where it's like, fuck, it's fun, man. People are paying their hard-earned dollars to come see you. They're cheering, they're going bananas, they're booing the shit out of you around the road. It's, that's fun. That's what you live for. I mean, that's the juice right there. The prep is where the character's made. And I just don't mean the character I play, I mean the fucking, the character in here. So for me, the prep is getting with the director, getting with the producers, getting with the writers, getting with the, getting with the, so in essence, it's like getting with all your coaches and your different uh, position coaches and, and all the meetings that you have to have, right? So that's the work you put in. The key for me was, where does it start? What's the anchor? What's the anchor? So I could have all these ambitions and you guys have all these ambitions, which is great. It's important. I'll play this role. You'll play that role. I'll execute this thing and it'll come out this summer. You guys will execute this thing during the summer, right? When it's time to really put in a lot more work. But the key with me is just always finding what the anchor is. And the fucking anchor is getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day before anybody else and grounding my thought process is in the no one will outwork me. No one. I love and I respect you guys. You motherfuckers won't outwork me. All starts with this. Two hands, putting it to work. The anchor for me has always been the work in terms of the weight room training. So when I first started wrestling, I was six years old, rolling on the mats with my dad. My old man, a lot of you guys won't know this. Yeah, Rocky Johnson. <laughs> my old man was Rocky Johnson. He was the first black WWF tag, WWF at that time. First black WWE tag team champions with Tony Atlas back in 1983. Uh, my uncles were wild Samoans. I come from a long line of pro wrestlers. Um, but before the wrestling part happened, uh, I was just in the gym putting in the work at six years old, rolling around on the mats. And finally, when I could touch weights at 13, that's what I was doing. But the weight part for me and the gym part has, has always been, has to be the anchor for me because again, it allows me, what's that? Yeah, yeah. It allows me to keep everything grounded. But then also, you know, look, I think too, I see, yeah, it's crazy. That's what happens. You get the strength coach in here. And the yeah, get it in there. <laughs> I went to Gunner's gym one time. We first moved to uh, LA about a year ago, man. He, he's like, come here, DJ, look at this thing. He picked this thing up and I was like, God damn, man. What? And there's a pulley here and the thing coming out of the fucking garage there. Like, look at this, it feels good, right? Like, I can't, I guess it feels good. I can't, I can't. Um, look, boys, event, your body's your body, right? You're young now, you're balling, everything feels good. You have your little nicks and dings and all that shit. You're gonna have that, you're gonna have your surgeries. Hey, we all have it. Uh, but, if, but eventually, and I promise you this, the one thing that will never, ever, ever go away is you get your ass in that weight room and you put in the work. That's gonna happen when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That never goes away. You get on the court, you shoot some shots, but you still, you're gonna wind up right back in the weight room, right? Right back in your spot. Film has the, gives me the biggest opportunity to make the biggest impact, global impact. I don't want to make small movies. I love and respect our movie business, but I want to make big movies that do well. And when they do well, it's not the money thing, because we have money, right? Money's good. Money's good. It ebbs and flows. It's the idea that I can impact as many people as possible with a big global movie. And when the global movie is touching a billion dollars, that sounds good, right? It's good for the bank accounts, good for everybody involved. Everybody's getting their piece of cake. It's great. But what that does do, it, I know I'm impacting people around the world by giving them some good entertainment, making them feel good, leaving the theater floating. So it's the same thing, right? When you guys have this bigger goal, say for example, when you become world champions again, <clears throat> as polarized as the sports world is, it's a fucking incredibly inspiring thing, even if they're not fans of your team even if they're not fans of your team. So think about that, you know, when you guys do that, the impact that that has, the ripple effect that that has for the city of LA, California, the United States, the globe, little kids, damn, I wanna be that one day.
favorite WWE moment would probably be, I've, I've had a lot of them and uh, got really, really lucky. I think probably uh, the matches I had with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, they were really good and we wound up, we just had a real special chemistry. Um, and anytime we got in the ring, it was it created this kind of magic and we broke a lot of records and pay-per-view records. At that time, WWE, they, they were still in the pay-per-view model and the pay-per-view business, they're not now. But that was always cool because we had a goal. Steve and I had a goal, which was let's, let's, uh, let's sell out a stadium and let's break a pay-per-view record. But it was always cool with him because then always too, you know, he was the kind of guy who, and you guys have this, you have this amongst your team, you have this amongst players in the league, where that guy, uh, former Texas football player, West Texas State down, so he was crazy, uh, but he would push me and we would push each other every night. 